What is up guys? We are going to be exploring Groveport, Ohio today. We have some uh, fun historical things that we're going to be uh, hitting on today and uh, you know we're going to be visiting um, some old canals and um, learning more about uh, this Columbus suburb so stay tuned and uh, come on this little adventure with us. What is up guys? We are going to be exploring Groveport, Ohio today. We have some uh, fun historical things that we're going to be uh, hitting on today and uh, you know we're going to be visiting um, some old canals and um, learning more about uh, this Columbus suburb so stay tuned and uh, come on this little adventure with us. Let's just give you a little bit more information here about Groveport. It was uh, founded in 1847, the oldest suburbs here. Got some nice little uh, restaurants here. the Ohio historical marker. Historic Groveport. This was uh, put here in 1995. Settlers came here around 1800. That's uh, almost 225 years ago at this point. Um, Groveport's made up of two settlements in 1847 that came together. So this was a big canal. This is a canal town here uh, for the Ohio Erie canals. You can see a lot of old architecture here. Okay, so just a little bit of information here as we're walking to Lock 22 here in Groveport. Um, this was built um, from between 1830 and 1831. So that just shows, I mean, almost, gosh, almost 200 years now that this, uh, this section of the Ohio and Erie Canal has been here in Groveport in the back of this park. So, um, some cool, some more information, um, for you to take in as we uh, walk in this forest. So if you don't know what the Ohio Erie Canal is, it's what connected the Erie, Lake Erie up north in Ohio to the Ohio River down um, on the southern border of Ohio. So this is how people would get to and from places throughout the state, but also send goods and um, products and resources uh, throughout the state um, to build infrastructure. Um, 200 years ago, that's just what you had to do. So you had to use the, the rivers and the, the natural ways to get around. There are tons of squirrels here. I feel like that should be the state animal of Ohio is the squirrel. We have lots of squirrels, lots of nature. 
Not the most exciting nature, but it is nature. So I just stopped here along the trail. You can actually see railroad tracks. This is what replaced the Ohio Erie Canal decades later in the uh, in the 1860s the railroad took over as the main transportation of goods and people so you kind of have a crossroads where every every form of transportation is kind of coming together we got the canals we got the trails and we got the railroads. We also got service people here. Taking care of the park. It's an important duty to do. To keep these natural ways looking good. So this Ohio historical marker was uh, placed here. 2006 by the... Uh, Groveport Heritage and Preservation, sorry, Preservation Society, and the Ohio Historical Society, which they have a big building. We'll, we'll visit there at some point, but um, yeah, here's Lock 22. Two hundred year old structure here. Boats would go through this. Continued on out of the city, but these are uh, these are pretty tall. It's a pretty tall structure here. So back to the sign here: the Ohio and Erie Canal Lock 22 was constructed from 1830 to 1831. It's the only canal lock in Groveport. Um. And it was constructed by W.H. Richardson as a part of his $2,937 bid to build Section 52 of the canal. Sandstone Lock is 117 feet long and 10 feet deep and has a 16 foot wide channel. Its purpose was to raise and lower canal boats to meet the changing terrain. For those who don't know, if you go east of here, it gets pretty hilly in the Appalachian Mountain starting. So, makes sense. Canal's presence helped fuel commercial and population growth in Groveport in the 19th century by providing a fast and reliable form of transportation to move people, goods, and services to and from the Ohio frontier. It was also a source of recreation as residents used its waters for fishing, rowboating, and ice skating. The canal basin at the western end of Lock 22 was a favorite spot for ice skating parties. So not only you have boats going through here in the summer, but in the wintertime, you'd have people ice skating through here. So for those who don't know, this park is all interlaced here with the Groveport Rec Center. So if you are over near here, that's where you can find it. Here is what it looks like uh, down at the bottom of the sign here. See the path over there? And this is water would fill this area in order to get boats through central Ohio to various areas of oh of Ohio so this is sandstone imagine laying these bricks here so you can go that's where the ice skating would be
and it's just been sitting here for almost 200 years now. It's been a long time since canals were actually used. So, interesting blast from the past here in Groveport, Ohio, south of Columbus. But what a beautiful uh what a beautiful view for this fall day. My guess is that there might have been some water here at one point where this uh, large field is. It's really honestly beautiful. Right on the edge of this forested pathway. Some birch trees there. Looks like they're actually uh, doing some repairs, some maintenance on this uh, barn here. I might be where they store those tractors. All the uh, other uh, parts and uh, equipment to take care of the park. And here is the Groveport Rec Center. Um, they have a whole facility here with all kinds of baseball diamonds and soccer fields, and they even have the community swimming pool here. Um, but we're going to continue on back here. Uh, and uh, explore this, the wooded part of the trail a little bit more um, before going back into the uptown area of Groveport. I just can't get over the fact how beautiful it is today. We're not gonna have many more days like this until it gets cold and dreary, but we're gonna make the most of it Learn some history, get some steps in, get out of the house, and in the nature. All before the cold winter comes through. Not looking forward to it this year. Heard we're supposed to get some above average snow here in Ohio, but not yet. It is. Too nice and fall like for that. We're gonna soak in every last bit of this sun that is shining over Ohio because it's not going to last much longer. Yep, they're taking care of the spark. They have tractors and four by fours. They can just travel through here as as they go, but uh, yeah, they did a, do a great job at preserving this park and all the areas here. Looks like they're actually uh, picking up leaves or something. Maybe they're actually mowing. So really, my whole thing about starting to make videos, I want to get back to my journalistic roots. I am in between jobs here in my career and you know I really have a calling here for journalism and really understanding the world and um, I want to share that with you guys make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button because you know that helps us out on the channel um, so yeah make sure the make sure to like subscribe that's all I can say let's get as many people viewing this video as we can and here's the view of the area from this side of the path you can see baseball diamond there looks like there's four of them and then a playground right in the middle along this nice path let's continue on shall we We are getting close to 
the edge of Groport Road here. I'm not sure where, if we have to cross the street here or what. It's a 55 mile per hour road. But it quickly goes to 25 as soon as you get into the small area of Groveport on the downtown area. So here we are, we are at Groveport Road at the Groveport Municipal Golf Course. They have a, they have a huge like horse farm back there. Um, Groveport is known for their horses. Um, and uh, the, their famous resident is John S. Rary. He was a world famous horse tamer that was revered here in Groveport, known throughout the world for taming horses. Not just riding them, but domesticating them. They're working on the golf course here. It is uh, would be a perfect day for golfing, but it looks like they've already shut down for the uh, for the summer or the season. So now we are here's this little pedestrian bridge that we're gonna cross over and make our way back towards where we started. There's a couple things that we will stop at on the way there, but. We are back. Officially back in Groveport after uh, visiting Lock 22. Lance Westcamp is the current mayor. So with all the military history here with the Mott's Military Museum and the history of the canals here in Groveport, Here's some nice old Victorian style homes that uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. This person here has beautiful brick wall here lining their property. It's probably just as old as the house. Beautiful trees throughout here. They really have kept the trees in pristine condition for many years. Definitely a highlight of the Uptown area. Something very interesting here in Uptown Groveport is the this uh, brick area of in between the road and, and the grass and the sidewalk. It's really interesting. There's got to be a story behind that because I really, you don't see that, you know, just along the street of town. Also, when are they going to build this road to be a two lane, two lane road here on this right side? This road's always congested and always backed up, especially around this time of day. It gets really, uh, it just gets really busy and hits 25 miles an hour after a 55. A lot of people getting, coming from Canal Winchester side of Groveport. It's where Brewdog is. Uh, there is, so part of Groveport is obviously the city, but then they also have Madison Township. So that's why their high school is Groveport Madison High School. Something you don't see here very often. LA Dodgers flag. Wonder if they were LA Dodger fan from the start or were they a Brooklyn Dodger fan that became an LA Dodger fan? Who will know? And this house is absolutely gorgeous. It's got that wraparound porch. It's got two front doors. It's got three 
levels, three stories, and beautiful yard. Go with it. It's a very old house. Love it. We cross the street. Some beautiful fall colors here. We're pretty much back into the middle of Groveport. So here is Ace Hardware again. This is the uh, middle schools here and the elementary school. Very busy uptown area. And as you can see, it's ever growing, ever developing, modernizing suburb here in Ohio. So we are going to be headed to the Groport Log House. This was built in 1815. So this is over 200 years old structure, still standing here in Ohio. Do have the cross street here, but nice view of historic city or town hall here in Groport. There it is in its glory. So the log house should be right down this uh, right down this road. There's no signs telling you what if that what that's down here, but it's got a uh, historical marker. So we'll uh, we'll hit it up and see what it's all about. So I think we're getting closer. I think I can see a sign. We got some more. What, mid-century homes here? Probably built in the 50s, 40s or 50s. Nice little, nice little town here. I look, the uptown is very pretty. And it's, uh, you know, for the most part, this side of town's pretty quiet. See here, a lot of these older houses have been redone so that they have modern amenities. And, uh, but they still got that small, small home in a small town setting. Well, here we are, the Groveport Heritage Park and Nature Center. There's a whole thing but here it is the log house built in 1815 it's part of the heritage park here in Groveport but here we go the Ohio historical marker sign it's placed here in 1984 so it's been here almost 40 years but Definitely one of the first things that they commemorated here in Groveport. It's built on Main Street. So I'm not sure if this is work, but Main Street is that main street up the uh, up in uptown. But um, in 1974, uh, during new post office site preparation, which is right down on Main Street, closer to the Kroger, they, uh, this log structure was discovered and moved to the uh, present location along the uh, canal route. There is a, um, a cemetery right next here, and that's where John S. Rary is buried. He is, uh, why they're the high school's nickname is the cruisers so there it is it's also part of the national registry of historic places very cool so we just crossed the street from the log house see there the cemetery and across the street is what's called Sharps Landing. 
It's a building from the uh, canal era of the city. If you want to do audio tours, they have that available. But we have three signs here. First one we got here is the ice house, the smoke house, and the bakery. So what I'm guessing is that the, what it seems like is that this is uh, a, a building that was on the canal that would, uh, you know, cater to people on the canal. So they would be places, some, get something to eat, get some ice to put, you know, other foods on and whatnot. But it was a stopping point for these, um, for people taking trips up on the canal or even uh you know commercials you know products going up and down coal resources so here is the history marker oh about sharps landing here um the ohio and erie canal enabled economic progress by making it easier to transport goods from ohio to eastern and southern markets groveport stopped along the canal route was one of many communities that grew because of the waterway. This building dating back to the mid 1800s sat along the Ohio and Erie Canal in the settlement known as Sharps Landing located about one mile south of here. During that time it served multiple purposes for the community and those riding aboard the canal boats. The eastern portion uh, was an ice house. The center section was a smokehouse where meat was processed and the west end contained a bakery. In 2015, the Groveport Heritage and Preservation Society salvaged and relocated the building to this site, which sits on the heel path of the Ohio and Erie Canal, where it passed through Groveport along what is now Worked Road. This building helps highlight the significance of the canal to the area. So here is the Groveport Cemetery, very old cemetery here see where uh rary is uh, buried very important person in this uh area of ohio so here is a rary headstone not sure if this is the rary but um Probably related, but there's some really old headstones here from 1800s. We have the Strodes and the Hamlers. Looks like we have a someone who was in the World War II, Isaac Hamler here, or not World War II, in um, in the Civil War. Very interesting. Here, here's another one. Yeah, I, this is kind of creepy. I don't, I'm not a big fan of cemeteries, but uh, this one's pretty old. Here is something. Let's see this. In the mid 1800s, the Groveport area experienced two cholera epidemics. It is believed these ungraved, these unmarked graves are those victims. Presumably, families brought their relatives here to bury them under the cover of darkness to avoid the stigma of the disease. Sounds like something we just went through. Here are some more tombstones that are been weathered away quite a bit so here is William H. Rary where the high school gets its uh, name of their mascot the cruisers he uh, was a 
horse enthusiast. He was a um, he tamed horses, world famous horse tamer. He's buried right here. Died in 1849, quite some time ago. But it looks like he was also a Civil War soldier. I could see where his uh, his expertise would probably come in handy quite a bit in Civil War with horses. So I think that's going to be today's video. I, uh, my other phone, my phone has died, so my backup camera here is going to uh, be capturing this finale of my first video here on uh, the channel, I'm going out and exploring what uh, what our world has for us. Um, just went a little bit down the road to Groveport, Ohio. Viewed some of the historical sites here um, in this suburb. Didn't know that it had such a long history. And, um, you know, they have preserved a lot of really interesting things here in their history. So, gotta give them kudos for, um, you know, keeping their story alive. And, uh, you know, we saw where the old past meets the present and probably where the future is where it's going to go. So, all in all, this is a pretty nice afternoon out walking around Groveport. And uh, I hope you, uh, hope you had a great time following me around. Um, be on the lookout for some more videos like this because honestly this is a really relaxing type of journaling um this little adventure i had so let's uh let's get back to the car gotta get some groceries here and uh i'll edit the video and we'll uh our timelines will meet so until next time take it easy don't work too hard. And now, here is the end.